Hi everyone, welcome to the fifth video of our front-end interview series. In this video, we are going to explore function scope and block scope. While many of us might already understand that, there are many that lack basic understanding of what we exactly mean by a block and this can also be asked to you in the interview. So let's explore everything in detail. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm actually creating a function and let's name this function display age, right? And what this simply does is displays the age. So let's create a variable here where age and assign it 23, right? And in here, I'm also going to console log this age. So I'm going to say console log age and let's actually go ahead and invoke this function so that we can see the output. And there's nothing unexpected about this, right? It will correctly log the age. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this statement out of here, right? And put it outside of the function. Now let's try to execute this and see. It is actually giving us an error. Reference error age is not defined. Why is that? The reason here is this. Whatever variables you declare inside of your function actually belong to that function. Because when we execute a function, a scope is created for that function. And when the function is done executing, it will be pushed from the stack and there is no memory of what was there inside the function. So when we are trying to do console log age, it is actually not present. Therefore, we can see that this any variable declared with the var keyword is function scoped. We say it is function scoped because if it is declared inside a function, then it will not be accessible outside of that function. Now let's understand what do we mean by a block. In JavaScript, anything that you declare inside of this curly brackets is actually known as a block. So these two brackets form one block, right? And inside of this, we can create another pair of block. And this is basically a nested block, right? So this is perfectly valid syntax in JavaScript. But why do we actually need this block and what's the purpose of it? Well, there are places in JavaScript where we need exactly one statement, right? So what if you want to execute multiple statements instead of one statement? So in places where you are expected to give one statement, but you want to execute multiple statements, you can actually use a block. For example, the if block in JavaScript, so I'm going to say if true, only expects one statement to be executed. So if I say if true, let me do where name is equal to Simran, right? We know that this is going to work, right? This is exactly one statement. And when we have one statement, we don't need to use the curly brackets. So this is perfectly valid syntax. But what if you want another statement to be a part of this condition? So let's say I say var name is equal to Simran. And then I want to do a console log name. What about this? As you know, the console log name will not be a part of the if statement because if you don't use curly brackets, then only one statement is going to be a part of the if block. That is the first statement, right? So all we need to do in case where we want to execute multiple statement is basically include these brackets, right? So these curly brackets are going to ensure that these two statements will be a part of this if condition, right? So in JavaScript, you can say that a block is nothing but a set of statements, right? It can be one or more statements. So in places where JavaScript expects you to have only one statement, you can use a block and combine it into multiple statement. And on a larger picture, this will be treated as one particular statement, a compound statement consisting multiple other statements. All right, so what happens if we declare variables inside of this block, right? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to console log this var, okay? So console log and let me say this particular name. Let's try to go ahead and execute this. As you can see, it is actually printing Simran. Actually, let me remove this console log, right? So that we are not confused. And we can see it printed Simran one time, right? Even though this var name is declared inside of this curly brackets, it is accessible outside of this curly brackets, right? So what does that mean? That means where is not block scoped. So block scope can be defined as whatever is accessible inside of the block that is global variables and whatever we declare inside of these curly brackets. However, we are able to access this name outside of these curly brackets. So that means variable declared with where keyword are not block scoped, right? In other words, you can say that if a variable declared with var keyword is not declared inside of a function, then it is a global variable, right? So this particular var name is not inside a function and therefore it will be treated like a global variable. That's why we are able to access it outside of the if statement. The same thing if we try to do it with let or const keyword, what will happen? So I have changed this to let and as you can see, this is already giving us an error. 
any variable that is declared with let or const keyword is actually block scoped. So if you see this curly brackets and declare any variable with let or const, you cannot access it outside of those curly brackets. So this is what we mean by block scoped and that's why we say that let and const are actually block scoped, right? And where is function scoped? You can also try to change this to const and see that you'll get the same error, right? This is actually indicating that there is a bug over here and you cannot access it outside of this if statement. Let's do a simple exercise to understand that. Can you guess the output of this particular program? We basically have a for loop and i is running from 0 to 4 inside of the for loop, right? And we are doing i++. So what will be the value outside of this for loop? Can we access i outside the for loop? Yes, right? So we are creating this block scope as you can see this curly brackets, but where keyword is not block scope. So let's run this and see and it should basically print 5 because we did i++ and the last value was 4. It became 5 and we came out of the for loop and it printed basically 5. Now what if I change this to let? Let's see what will be the output in this case. I'm going to run this and it is giving uncaught reference error. i is not defined. Well, because when we declared this block, this i became a part of this block, right? So it cannot be accessed outside of this block. That's why the var keyword creates a lot of confusion and you might get an unexpected value of i even outside of the for loop. That's why it is advised for you to use let or const keyword. There are various other reasons why we should be using let and const instead of var, but here is one of the cases. Now let's do something interesting based on what we just learned. So I'm going to create a variable age and assign it one, okay? And I'm going to create the same variable again and assign it a value of two. Now is this valid? Can you declare the same variable with the same name twice? Let's run this and see. As you can see, there are no errors in the console. And what will be the output? Let's console log this age variable and see. And it is going to print 2 because your age variable was actually reassigned, right? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and change this to let instead of var and let's see what changes. So I have done let twice and as you can already see, this is actually giving us an error. That means any variable that is declared with the let keyword cannot be redeclared inside of its scope. What do we mean by that? Right now we are in the global scope, right? These are global variables. The same variable cannot be redeclared again, right? But the same thing you could do with the var keyword. So this is going to save us a lot of errors and debugging when we declare variables with the let keyword because it won't let you redeclare it like that. And the same is also true for the const keyword. Now what if I change this to var and let's see what happens in that case. Again, you will see that there is an error. That means var and let will actually conflict with each other within the same scope. They should actually not conflict with the same name. Now the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create a block, okay? And let me keep this let inside of the block. As you can see, this is not giving us any error. And why is that? Because let is not currently interfering with the var keyword because let is sitting inside of its block scope, right? Now let's reverse the order and see what happens. As you can see, I made this let and this one var. And why is this one giving us an error over here? The reason is this. I told you before that a var is only function scoped. That means this var age is actually a global variable. It's like ignoring these block, right? As if this block statement is not there at all. So right now we have already discussed that they are actually conflicting with each other in the global scope. So declaring any variable with the var keyword inside a block is like declaring it globally. And the same thing will also be applied to the const keyword. Hope this video made sense to you. That's it in this video. If you have not yet subscribed, don't forget to subscribe for the upcoming videos and smash the like button if you like this video. In the next video, we are going to learn about the this keyword which is pretty scary among developers. See you in the next video.